Hi guys, March 23rd of 2020. This uh, Samoan Live is brought to you by Hemp's CBD, Hemp Pork CBD Coffee. I uh, can't go a day without it. It's delicious. It's made with Arabica beans, chaga mushrooms, which is found to be one of the most uh, the richest mushroom with antioxidant properties. Uh, this is uh, has five milligrams of uh, THC free uh, coffee. It's been infused with the CBD. Uh, I prefer to put this. I this packet lasts me three cups. I split it up in three cups. Otherwise, some people just pour the whole thing in a cup of hot water and. Uh, Listen, I only started drinking coffee when I was 30, so I'm still trying to develop the connoisseur uh, taste for it. I do follow a young couple that uh, moved down to Panama, and their buddy is a, a coffee meister. I'm not sure exactly what the name for those are, but um, if you know that, let me know. Um, anyway, I ordered a, a bag of that from them. And I'm, I'll be anxious to see when that comes, if it comes, and how that's going to taste. So this will be the last edition of, uh, of the Time Forgotten on Samoa. I'll be, it's not all the memories. So I'll go ahead and kick off today's reading. I hope you are well and you have everything that you need. I've been so blessed. So today... Of course, the most important event in our lives last year was the successful launching of IT. Why <laughs> call my brother IT? Since George arrived last May, we have taken our rightful place of subjection to his major wants and wishes. If you were to call him boss of our household, you would be correct. He thinks. When you receive this, he will have 10 months of life behind him. Gee, how do they change in this short period of time? For a while, it looked like the sledding was going to be pretty rough. We did not know if he wanted to be a bottle baby. After this little matter was taken care of, he turned out to be a real human. Forthcoming was great size of relief from all sides. We made rapid growth in the first months and proved that he was a true Watson. Somewhere between the fifth and sixth months, he decided to get a tooth. As it turned out, he pushed through six and three weeks. A little later, two more appeared. We never thought he would learn how to crawl. It was too much effort for him to get to his flat, his fat tummy off the floor. He was quite content to use the drag method of propulsion. Recently, he has graduated and now moves around on all fours. Guess he got tired of having the grass floor mats tickle his tummy. His inquisitive mind, as with most of his contemporaries, rules him often. He loves to pull himself up to a standing position. The method finally learned consists of bending in the solar plexus region and dropping with a dull thud upon the rear platform. We hope it is only a temporary method or he might become quite broad-minded without even going to school. Well, it would save on clothes and money anyway. It is upon rare occasions that he lacks attention at our home with a house girl who loves Pelagi babies and his mother and father pretty handy. He is well fondled. Pelagi, if you will recall, is uh, the Samoan word for a white boy. Um, vital statistics now read weight about 24 pounds, height 27 inches. By the way, he even goes to Samoan church quite often. The girl likes to be seen with him, so she arrives early on Sunday, gives him a special shine, and off they go. How he acts makes no difference, for the more he fusses, the more people look. The more they look, the better the girl likes it. What a vicious cycle. Phil has been kept quite busy this past year with George and all the other jobs that go together in making a house a home. A portion of your spare time has been spent on sewing. Many multicolored shirts now adorn my closet and like a number of dresses, blouses, and skirts adorn her closet. Also, she has helped solve innumerable pocketbook mysteries plus an assortment of more refined reading. The book of the year for both of us is Kantiki. We would practically feel the adventure as we live so close to it here in the midst of Polynesia. 
It, her health has run the usual gauntlet with its ups and downs, with the exception of a few complications after George's birth and a recent disorder, nothing has been very serious. In fact, most of it can be attributed to living in the tropics. The story is quite the same for me. I've been down a few days, but luckily they've been on weekends or during vacations. Or is that lucky in a tropical paradise? My job this year has been quite different than a major portion of last year. Leaving the straight classroom a year ago, January enables me to see a hundred or so of the students' plantations before the end of June. And in July, I took over the two and a half acre rock and weed infested 33 degree slope, the Foyer Farm. I did recently find the journal that he wrote pertaining to the um, Foyer Farm. So I'm going to uh, look into that and transposing that as well. The year started with 150 men in attendance, but for various reasons, 26 have been dropped from the training program. The most I have at any one time is 31 men. We've planted the following crops on our plantation this year. Bananas, cacao, cocoa in the can, cacao in the bush, pineapples, taro, tomatoes, Chinese cabbage, radishes, some corn, a few watermelons, and in a short time, coconuts. The Kalagi crops are ex experimental plantings. Most of the work on various crops is improved planting methods. A lot of the time is spent keeping unwanted, fast-growing tropical vegetation slashed down and pulled out of our plantation. Truly though, it has been very interesting and at times very hectic working with the Polynesian native. We purchased a Jeep a year ago, March, but I'm not done as much touring as we would like to. Every weekend seems to come and go before we can get out of the house. I've been to both ends of the island, 17 miles either way, but Phil has not quite made it yet. If we can get away from reports, painting, sickness, bottles, and bad weather in the next couple of months, we may be able to add to our earlier collection of pictures. If not, we'll have to get along with our fairly representative views of the island and its people, which we already have. Our Christmas this year was spent on the traditional stateside pattern, right down to the receiving of fine cards from many of you folks. Although the snow scenes did not fill our locale, they were warmly received anyway. We have to make our own Christmas trees in Samoa, as much do not exist in nature. The branches were iron weed, toss, and the trunk was of hibiscus, the fowl. Holes were drilled in the fowl, towel branches were pointed and thrust into the holes. A little green thread from branch tip to trunk added strength, and one by six board made the base, and the tree was finished. Decorations were the usual globes, icicles, tinsel, and lights. Some trees were made of palm leaves tied together in their upright position, and that was very pretty. The dinner, hmm, <clears throat> it was a big feast. Two other couples and their children shared it with us. We had a little bad luck with the turkey, frozen with the insides, leg, and the head still on, but luckily a large hen turned out to be a delicious substitute. At your table, the man folk probably enjoyed wearing suits, whereas here the males unbuttoned their rayon shirts. The girls could only be brave and face it. But the temperature was about 95, the humidity the same, and no breeze. It was nearly the warmest day of the year. Remember, the upside down, the international dateline. This is their summer. As we turned the corner of this new year, very quiet for us, had to awaken Phil at midnight. We knew we were coming into the home stretch. For no sooner had I finished painting the interior, a Christmas promise, when Phil began talking to packing some of our gear. Isn't married life wonderful? I passed it off for a while until we found out the northbound boat schedule. The ship now coming in early March was due in January, and the one originally due in July. Who knows when it'll arrive? So that's what's happened more weekends, at least for 60% of our household and personal gear. I wonder what is next. We have managed to keep abreast of the world in stateside news this year, even if the news was from one to three months old. Remember, this is 1952. A daily subscription to the Indianapolis Times and my old hometown weekly, the Berwyn Beacon, helped bridge the mileage gap. Although we get daily newscasts from the AFRS shortwave, they cannot tell too much in 15 minutes. Steamer Day is long anticipated for this reason. Within three days of its departure, 
All the mail is sorted, the papers are unfolded, put in date order, and read from the headlines to the ads on the back page. A lot of what we're reading lately does not please us. Enough said. What was going on back in 1952? To say that our feet were not itching to touch that old continental limit, thence to Illinois and Indiana soil would be an erroneous exaggeration. Those folks had their car packed already and are planning to meet us in San Francisco. After we get back to the Midwest, where is anyone's guess, the job is the thing. Yet we also feel little pangs of remorse as we occasionally realize that in a few months we should be leaving Samoa, its people, its problems, quite possibly never to return again, and they didn't. It has been a wonderful experience. We have gained much, and we hope that during our stay we have left an equal amount behind. We've also found that great importance attached to calling people friends. Had it not been for your pens, typewriters, or transmitted well wishes, time would have dragged by with endless emptiness. As it is, the time has come to say once again, Tofa Sofua from American Samoa. That means, may God be with you. I do have a complete Samoan uh, photo album that I have on my Facebook, and I've been trying desperately to try and share that again. But um, that is just encapsulated their two years on American Samoa. And uh, there's one more letter that was written in here, and that's uh, a letter 13 years later. So we'll check back with the Watsons and see what they're doing in 13 years tomorrow. But uh, for now, boy, I have uh, stuff to do today. Yeah, man. I had to slice up bananas and get those in the freezer. But a big ass bag of popcorn from the back top way. I'm going to make that into caramel corn. Hence the caramel posts. Um, and I hope you're all doing well. These are really uh, unnerving times that we're in, but uh, for me, I'm trying to turn my work inside. Um, I'm getting sleep most nights, and uh, I'm just trying to get organized. And you know, my goal it, before the virus was to downsize and uh, have everything fit in my van, and uh, now. It may be the same thing, but with a different objective, because I have no idea with no work, I'll be able to keep a roof over my head. But that, uh, that, there again, I'm confident. The Lord has never let me go without, and so that's why I don't worry, and that's why I still have a smile on my face. I have a lot yet to live for, and I miss my children desperately, and uh, I can't wait till we can all see each other again. I hope you are all doing well. And uh, cheers from Snowy Davis, Illinois. I love you more than my luggage. See you tomorrow. <laughs>